I got a ton of requests after I did my Apple Watch video to make a video about how I deal with my focus issues and dealing with ADHD and, and stuff like that. This video is sponsored by Indel. If there is one thing you take away from this video, and it's why I'm putting it first on this list, is trim down notifications. I cannot even begin to state how bad having notifications on for every single app and service that you use can be. Every time you get a notification that comes in, that is pulling your attention away. I see so many people that have notifications on for stuff like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like social media stuff, or like apps, like games that they play and the apps send them notifications. Oh, you jump in now and buy these gems for 50% off or something like that. I, I guarantee you, you guys, you don't need those notifications on. Spend some time, go into settings, go into notifications, look at each app and really ask yourself, does getting a notification from this really do something for me or is it doing something for that app or service? Really kind of just look at it and, and decide for you. I can't make those decisions for you. You just, you kind of got to pick them for yourself. And then you can get to stuff like email. Now, email is a tricky one because I know some people's jobs re require email notifications to be on. Like they have to be on top of their email all the time. So this one is gonna be kind of loose. Like you kind of have to take it for what you do. Back at, when I had a day job and even now, I have some email notifications on. So I use the VIP setting in, in mail. So what this does is it allows me to set a list of certain people. So as those people send me emails, I get notifications from them, but nobody else. And these are people that are important to me that I, I either work with uh, on the business side or work with brands that I talk to a lot. Um, and that when they send me an email, I know it's important and it's something I need to deal with as soon as possible. Everything else, no way. The amount of email lists and stuff I get signed up for, I do not need those notifications coming and pulling my attention away, distracting me from my core work because that's what the point of this video is. Staying focused on the tasks that you actually need to be working on, not dealing with the stuff that is trying to pull your attention away. Seriously, minimize notifications. And like if you use an Apple Watch and stuff like that, I would go even further into that. So you can go into the watch app and go into each app and customize the notifications. For me, I don't even have messages on the Apple Watch. I have basically my core productivity stuff like things and Fantastical and then like health related data that the Apple Watch is, is kind of like the specific device for. But other than that, no. Absolutely not. The Apple Watch, I do not want my wrist buzzing all day long, especially like with group chats and stuff like that. That just shoots my anxiety straight up. I don't want that. Um, I got to a point with the Apple Watch. At one point I had all that stuff on and I was just ripping the Apple Watch off and shoving it in my desk drawer because I just, I couldn't handle that stuff when I was, you know, working in the middle of the day, trying to focus on stuff and my watch going off because of group notifications. So I made a video not too long ago about the new focus features that's in iOS and iPad OS 15 alongside Mac OS and watch OS. It's, it's all across Apple's platform. Um, uh, and I can't stress how important these features are. Um, if you're somebody that struggles with anxiety or focusing issues or ADHD or anything like that, especially if your devices are causing that, focus is going to help with that. So I have different focuses that I talked about in that video that allowed me to pare down notifications to really specific things for specific tasks. So for example, personal is just kind of like my all encompassing. I'm not working, you know, I'm, I'm open to getting messages. I'm open to getting phone calls and stuff like that. So it just allows almost everything. I, I went in and like really specified certain things, but it just kind of lets the floodgates open and I can get contacted from anywhere. Then a new one is light work. What I found is there were some times where I was just like playing around with different apps and stuff like that. So I still wanted my work home screens, but I, I was okay getting messages from people. So that's what light work does is it allows work and communication notifications. But then I have the work focus and that just allows work notifications, stuff like uh, things, Fantastical, mail VIPs, those specific things, but like message communications, Instagram comments, Twitter DMs, stuff like that. No way, like absolutely not. 
And then another new focus I've created since I made that focus video is meetings. This kind of does the opposite of work. This allows communications through, uh, but not really work notifications. So my attention isn't getting pulled when I'm in meetings, but if somebody sends me like a background message while we're like in a group meeting or something like that, I can still see that. I, I would get those messages every once in a while and I would miss them and it wouldn't cause a problem, but it would just be like, oh, probably should have seen that a little bit ago. Then there is deep writing and action and these let nothing through. Deep writing is obviously from when I'm writing and action is when I'm filming my devices or filming a roll like this. These allow no notifications through whatsoever. Uh, the only difference is action has all of my home screens available. So uh, depending like if I'm filming my iPad Pro here and I wanna show something on my personal home screen, I can just flip to that. Or if I wanna see something on my work home screen, I can flip to that. This video is sponsored by Endel. I actually don't think there could be a more perfect sponsor for this video. If you're having a hard time focusing or you're stressed or you're just having trouble falling asleep, Indel is for you. Indel uses real-time personalized sounds to keep the user calm and focused. I actually use this a lot personally when I was dealing with anxiety, and this was way before they reached out about a sponsorship. This was a year or two years ago that I was really using this app and I just found it super helpful. I found the sounds it produced calmed me down and allowed me to focus on my tasks. Endel can use data like location, weather, movement, and even heart rate to adapt in real time to shift sounds to fit your specific needs. One of my favorite features about Indel is shortcut support. So when I'm going to bed, I can yell at my HomePod minis to, hey, play sleep, and it'll play the sleep station from Indel. I found this to be relaxing and it does help me fall asleep. Or when I'm sitting down to work, I can say the Siri trigger phrase, play focus and it'll start the focus station. I pair that with noise canceling headphones and I'm right in the zone. If you're struggling with sleeping, relaxing, or even focusing, try out Indel. The first 100 people to click the link in the description below can try out Indel free for seven days. My thanks to Indel for sponsoring this video. One thing that I have kind of borrowed stolen, whatever you want to call it, from the GTD, the getting things done methodology, is capture. I capture everything. If I get an idea for a project in my head, if I like realize, hey, this is a task I need to get done, like I need to go get my car washed before I take it to my parents' house, because my dad will comment on the fact that it's dirty. Actually, more likely my grandpa will call, comment on the fact that it's dirty. I, I, these are the kind of things I capture. For that, I use an app called Drafts. Drafts is an app I've been using for years now. It is a plain text editor, but it has support for syntax highlighting for markdown, task paper, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really good for that kind of thing. Um, I, so anytime I like get an idea in my head, I just open the Drafts app. And what's cool about the Drafts app is when you open it, it just opens right to a blank canvas. So you can just write down what you want. Then, you know, if I'm out and about or whatever, when I come back to my iPad, I have, you know, a few notes. Usually by the end of the day, I have somewhere between five and 10. I can send those off to the appropriate places, whether it's a task manager, whether it's a long-term note I wanna save for later, whether I wanna send it off to uh, my new project management database. All of that just kind of gets sent to the appropriate places using Drafts Actions. Drafts Actions are a built-in automation tool. Um, there's a bunch of ones pre-built in when you download the app, but there's also a directory where you can download a bunch of ones uh, not only the developer Greg made, but a bunch of users have made. And and on top of that, you can make your own. Drafts also has support for custom themes. Uh, and I actually made my own theme. It's called Dark Knight. Um, you can download it from the Drafts directory. I will link to that and everything else I talk about in the description below. And then the one final thing that Drafts has and just got recently that has just been killer is wiki style linking. So I can link uh, notes that are connected to each other. I can link them together. Super handy, super useful. Two thumbs up for Drafts. Automate everything when possible. I can't stress this enough. Automation is your friend. There's a lot of tasks that need to get done for me that are really simple and really repetitive that I personally don't need to be involved in. And that's where automation comes in. Now, I use shortcuts for a lot of automation stuff. I will link to some videos in the description below about shortcuts and stuff that I've talked about that handle these kind of 
background automations. Uh, I also use a web service called Zapier. Zapier is a really great web service for allowing things to happen in the background um, that you don't need to interact with, especially if it's web connected stuff, web related stuff. Then I use an app called PushCut when I need to marry the two. So for example, whenever I, I release a new video, I have Zapier watching the RSS feed from my YouTube channel. When it sees that there is a new video, it sends a notification to the app PushCut and PushCut sends a notification to me saying, hey, this video is now live. And if I tap on that notification, it runs a shortcut that basically generates a blog post out of the RSS feed information and takes that and publishes it to my blog. And then it also asks me if I want to share that video to Twitter. Super handy, something I use a lot. So I've been talking a lot about software and I do think software is more important than hardware, but there are two key hardware pieces that at least help me focus that hopefully they might help you. The first one, and it's gonna be no surprise to anyone that watches this channel, it's the iPad. The iPad is my go-to computer. And the reason why is I think it's a really focused device. The iPad only allows you to have one or two things on the screen at a given time. So it really forces you to focus on a specific task, like one task at a time. And I love that. Uh, I've been using the Mac a little bit more lately for video editing and stuff like that, just cause I've had some issues. Uh, and what I found with the Mac is it's a very distracting platform because there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. You've got menu bar applications, you've got stuff happening in the dock. It's, 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 there's a lot going on. And what I like about the iPad is it's focused. So when I'm sitting down to write or deal with emails or administrative tasks or whatever, that's when I grab the iPad and I can just really just bang out those tasks. Then the other hardware piece is noise canceling headphones. Uh, there are a lot of noise distractions around us. Uh, if you work in an office, other people, I know when I had an office job, uh, people were very loud and very distracting. Uh, but even right now, like I work from home, there's lawn mowers and really noisy neighbors that like to stand right out there and have very loud conversations for whatever reason. But noise canceling headphones allow me to block those out. Now there's all sorts of different kinds of brands of noise canceling headphones. My favorite are the AirPods Max, but they are incredibly pricey. I, I completely understand that. AirPods Pro are good. There's the Sony line of uh, noise canceling headphones. Those are also good. Those go on sale quite a bit. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. I would just get something that is well reviewed and would actually says, hey, it blocks out the noise. It does a good job at it. Because at the end of the day, uh, the way our brains work, if we hear a noise, if we hear something, it's going to pull our attention and we're going to want to see what's what's going on. So noise canceling headphones block out that world around you and allow you to stay focused. The last thing I want to talk about is having a clean workspace. I cannot stress how much more productive I am when I have a clean workspace versus when like everything's just an absolute disaster in here. So what I do is when I come in my office, the first thing I do in the morning, well, first thing I do is turn on the lights and start playing some music. But after that, I, I pick up my office. I just make sure everything's in its proper place. Uh, sometimes I'll run the vacuum, just kind of make sure everything's nice and clean, wipe off my desk, wipe off this table that I film at, stuff like that. Um, and it just gets me in, in a good spot. When I have like filming gear all spread out or iPads or whatever, like it, it's just, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like a good place to work in. And when I, there's the saying, a cluttered space, cluttered mind, uh, I always used to roll my eyes at that, but I actually kind of think it's true. So these are tools and tips that have helped me focus. If you have something that really helps you focus, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure other people watching this video would find that helpful as well. Um, so, you know, scroll down in the comments and see what people have said. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. My thanks to Endel for sponsoring this video. Remember the first 100 people to use the link in the description below get to try Endel for free for seven days. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.